Hey there, LEGO fans. Welcome back. Alex here. In this video, we are going to be taking a closer look at these three Technic space sets. And uh, you know what? I got to say this before I get started into this because I feel like I'm going to be saying the word space a number of times. And as you guys know, or many of you know, when I hear that word, I just want to bust out in William Shatner's voice and start the intro of space, the final frontier. So I'm going to do my best to resist that. Hopefully, it just got out of my system right then and there. But <laughs> irregardless, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So we have these three Technic sets. And I also, I feel like I, I need to clarify something here. I, I think I gave the vibe off in a breaking news episode that I don't like Technic sets. But I actually do. I think they're pretty cool. What I don't thoroughly enjoy is, I guess, the, the building process because it can be at times difficult because it's a very different approach than just your bricks on bricks. It's a lot of pins into holes and beams and things like that. And uh, it kind of hurts your fingers, especially when the uh, piece count starts to get kind of high. So anyway, let's go ahead, take a look at these things here. Uh, I'll introduce each of these three sets. Now, these are all Technic space sets, and they're kind of uh, supposed to be compatible in some way, shape, or form uh, with the Friends space sets and the Lego City space sets. However, these are obviously a completely different scale. I mean, they don't even come with uh, minifigures, right? So uh, there's not, I don't even think those old Technic minifigures from like 20 years ago would fit in these either. Uh, there are seats in these things, uh, but they're obviously way too big for minifigures. So uh, this is kind of in a scale of its own. So just kind of keep that in mind, but it is kind of cool that they kind of imply that some larger Lego people could probably be occupying these vehicles. Let's start with the smallest set here. We have the Surface Space Loader, set number 42178. 435 pieces in this thing, and it's going to retail for $35. This is your entry level guy here. Now, <laughs> Mindy, my wife, uh, she helped me out and helped me build these, and uh, she grabbed this set, and she was building this thing, and it was the first set that she built that's Technic, and it's also gonna be her last because she did not enjoy it at all. There was, there was no satisfaction in the build. She was telling me repeatedly that she was not happy with this build, or, or at least the process. So she was happy to be done. But, uh, but as you can see here, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, I don't really know its purpose. I mean, it has this extra little module here uh, that you can use to, I guess, pick up samples uh, of the uh, surface of whatever planet that they are on. I don't know if it's going to be alien, uh, finkel matter, or what. I don't know. Uh, but this thing's got three, I, le I think there's three functions with it. It's got rear steering that you control with this blue knob here in the back. It's a little counterintuitive. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, which way am I going here? Uh, and then you have this red knob, which raises the front cockpit. And... You turn, you turn, you turn, and it, it lifts it up here, and, and yeah, and, and that's it. So I guess if they need a better view of what's going on around them, uh, they can do that, which is great. I, I like that option. You can, it can be a low rider or really high up. I like being high up. Uh, and finally, there's this, I don't know, hook or, 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 or crane here on the side that's supposed to, I think, lift this. Um, so you have this thing that kind of makes it go over the side there a little bit. This thing lowers down, lifts it up, I guess, like this, uh, and then it goes. It's it's a little off balance, and if this uh, retrieves it back inside, it interferes with the wheel. I don't know. It seems like whoever designed this went, you know what, this is good enough. It'll be fine. People will figure it out and they kind of just went on their way. So it's a little disappointing in that regard. It seems like a gimmick that just didn't quite work out, and they are like, you know what, we don't want to redesign this. Let's just go ahead and go with it. So that is what this thing ended up being. It's not like one of those critical entries in this uh, when you compare it to these other two vehicles. Even though the price difference is substantial, uh, it doesn't seem like it's really worth the pickup unless you just want something in this particular theme. One more detail I will say is that it does have this bar right here that says lift on it, making me think that there's supposed to be a vehicle that can lift it. And let's use that as a segue into this beast right here. 
This is the VTOL Heavy Cargo Spaceship LT-81. Set number 421A1 contains 1,365 pieces, and this retails for 110 US dollars. It's not based on any real spacecraft out there, but I do like how they kind of give it these interesting designation and numbers like that. But this thing is actually really cool. Uh, it's big, it's easy to pick up, it's uh, meant to be played with, so it's got this very convenient handle here in the middle that you can just lift up and start flying it around. It has three main functions, all of which are actually pretty impressive. Now the first one here are the engines, and to move those around we have these blue gears here in the middle that we can put our thumb on, and that's going to rotate these engines around. So if it's landed here, uh, we put these uh, thrusters downward and it thrusts it up right there and then we can change the direction as it takes off. Very, very cool. Then we have the black gears. That is the landing gear, which is so slick. I love how those go up and down like that. And then finally, we have this red button here in the middle that we can push down. And this is basically the carry-all function here. So it has these two hooks and it's supposed to go down and pick up this cargo box here. So it picks up the cargo box, we push down on our thumb, it brings it in, but it doesn't lock all the way unless we push really hard and watch this. Well, I guess hear this, you hear that click? It is locked in there. I am not pulling this thing out. It is, it is not going anywhere. And I went, hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's what is supposed to pick up this other vehicle. So uh, before I do that though, let me, let me, I don't even know if I checked this out yet, but let me put down the landing gear. No, it cannot land on the landing gear with the cargo container attached to it. So unfortunately to get that to unlock, we actually had to pull up on this red button. Boop, there it goes, very, very nice. And then it's on its way. Then this thing can bring that back up, put its landing gear down and properly land. My forearm is tired from holding that thing, wow. Uh, but yeah, the cargo uh, container here just takes this little vehicle. Uh, it's an automaton, it just goes out and explores the uh, surface of whatever planet it's on. It can go in and out of this box very conveniently and it opens on both sides. Uh, yeah, very nice. Well, you know, let's demonstrate this, guys. Let's see, let's see if this thing will actually pick this thing up. It seems like it's gonna be heavy and awkward uh, to do this, but um, there's only one, let's do it from the back one. Maybe that'll do it. Oh, you know what? That's actually pretty good. Look at that. That's balanced. Yeah, I, I, this, that's the first time I've actually done this. So I'm actually impressed. So there we go. So yeah, the carry all can pick this beast up, drop it and be on its way. That is actually really cool. Okay. That. That makes me like this a little bit more. So there you go. Th this is actually really neat. I am impressed with how this thing is. There's not a lot to it. I mean, you can see, you know, kind of right through it. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of paneling on it, um, but that's all because it allows you to just simply pick it up and fly it around. And it looks pretty cool. It does have a pretty decent wingspan and these uh, elements here at the back kind of stick out. So making, making it a display model is a little tough because of its awkward shape. But other than that, it's pretty cool. Oh, and also when you're flying it and you're tipping it back and forth, the cockpit stays level. And there, there are two uh, seats in there. One is the pilot seat, one's the other co-pilot seat, and you got some controls there as well. Very, very neat. All right, guys, last but not least, this beast. This is the Mars Crew Exploration Rover, set number 42180, has 1,599 pieces, and it's gonna retail for 150 US dollars. So this is the uh, the big boy of the group. And I like that we have kind of a variety of something that flies and something that drives. Now, this is supposed to be based on the concept of vehicle um, that NASA put out. Uh, I'm not sure if that's ever going to come to fruition, but I think it's kind of cool that it's kind of based on some sort of I don't know, reality, uh, but there's a lot going on with this thing. It doesn't have just a few little gimmicks and that's it. Uh, this thing is a kind of like a little town on wheels. So let's start at the front here. First off, this thing looks really, really cool. I mean, it looks like a very robust truck, doesn't it? Uh, and it kind of looks like a truck to a space truck space truck. <laughs> but you have the cockpit here, you open up here the front, and we have uh, these two comfortable looking seats here and some very nice dash displays or heads up displays right there as well. 
And although it doesn't have it here, um, you're supposed to be able to access the back from the front cockpit. Now this is kind of where I get a little confused because I look at the size of the seats and I kind of imagine the size of the person driving this. And then we go to the back here. We open this up. It's really nice uh, area here where you can go back and it looks like you can jog on a treadmill, you can take a shower, and you can do other business there it looks like. And then you also have the, this little fridge area or a compartment that has some ready to eat meals and a place to sit down and enjoy those meals. Now the space here, space in the back, looks like it's minifig scale and not even that. So it's a little inconsistent I think with the size of the people that would be operating this massive vehicle, but it is still pretty cool. And I do like the, the fact that they have this little area back here as well. So this thing can be parked and it's a long-term vehicle. Like you're on a long-term mission. Uh, you can live in this thing for maybe a week or two and you are good to go. But then uh, you move to the back here and there is a door here that opens up and you can access the cargo area here. It's kind of open. It's like a big flatbed. And these two compartments here, uh, these looks like they hold uh, some rock or sediment or just kind of some samples uh, from the surface of this uh, planet that they are exploring. We'll take those out. Then we have a bunch of these little tanks. There are eight here with different colors, meaning they could be different gases or fluids or whatever the case might be. And this actually flips over like that uh, to kind of double up. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Because on the other side here, we also have these lanterns. There's three lanterns here. So if they're operating in the dark, uh, which is what I do a lot at my job, uh, then you can use those as well. And then we also have these two other things that can be removed from uh, the, uh, the flatbed here, one of which is a fuel cell. Uh, so they can use this as a generator uh, to power their tools or whatever's going on. However, this thing is super heavy. You can't just lift this thing up, right? So that's why we have this crane. This crane is multifunctional, uh, can be flipped out and uh, to load and unload this massive uh, truck here for lack of a better term. So yeah, it can deload um, this cell. And we also have this, uh, um, looks like it's a, a tool box, but it also holds a little vehicle inside that can be taken out. And uh, similar to uh, the spacecraft there, it does have this little vehicle that can be you know, deployed and run around the surface and do some exploring. And I'm guessing collect some rocks or whatever the case might be, run into some alien life, you never know. Uh, so when it's like this, you'll notice that, let's say they have all the stuff deployed and there's a lot of extra space here, <laughs> space. Uh, and what's really cool about this, and I think this, this is a function I think real life trucks need. I think this is so cool, but there's these little yellow locks on either side. We're gonna take these out. And check this out. This is, this is the coolest thing. Push on either end here. And it shrinks. It's like super compact. And I think that is just the coolest thing. What if the big auto manufacturers did something like that? Where they created a truck that could have, you want an eight foot bed or a five foot bed? Well, guess what? You can get both. And then finally though, here at the back, uh, we do have a little uh, loader. And I'm, I don't know if this is a loader for the equipment or if it's a loader for the people. Um, but it is a little ramp, a little elevator, because this thing is tall, and that little flap goes down there, and it is good to go. Now, if this thing is driving around, how does it perform? Well, it does have the hand of God steering up here, so that's pretty neat, and it works really well. Uh, now, it doesn't have suspension. However, it does have this interesting gimmick with the rear wheels, where if one's going up, the other one's going down. So it's going along, and it goes up on a rock here. You'll notice that the other wheel goes up too. Now, this should actually stay down, but you'll notice there's nothing on the opposite to push this side up. So that's, it's either one or the other. Uh, so if one's going up, the other's going down and vice versa. I don't really know if I'm a fan of that. I kind of, I like the gimmick. I like the articulation, but the forced articulation is a little bit, I don't know, disappointing. Uh, the front does articulate back and forth like this, which is kind of cool. I mean, this thing, look, look, look at this thing. Look at the flex on that. That is a serious flex. Wow. So let's see here. I think that's really about it on that thing. I mean, it does have a lot of cool stuff all around it. Uh, I will also mention this. It does have a lot of cool details all around it. It makes it look like this thing's got a lot of oxygen tanks, auxiliary tanks, emergency supplies, and things like that all around it. And the wheels, the wheels look pretty cool too. They're all futuristic. They have these uh, uh, brake disc hubcaps around them to kind of give them that 
lunar module look or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're gray, which I think is a good color, not black, kind of sticking with these classic space colors or these, these new space colors, I guess I should say. They're not really classic. The orange is very bright, very eye-catching. Um, but no, these are, these are good. I mean, uh, they have a lot of stickers. All of them. Uh, there's no getting around that, and so it's, and you guys know I, I I'm not a fan of stickers. But these things have, they do have a lot of stickers. Each one has one instruction booklet. Obviously, they're uh, they're pretty good. Nothing crazy. There's no fancy information inside of them as well. Uh, but all in all, these are pretty solid Technic sets. I think uh, they are a little unique in what they offer a Lego builder. They're not something I personally would buy for myself because, I mean, you guys know this. Like, there are certain sets that I want and certain sets that I don't want when it comes to Technic. And I love the Technic race cars. I love the 1.8 scales. While these things are impressive, and I did enjoy building them, and I, I like the features, they're not something that I personally would buy, but that doesn't mean they're bad sets. Uh, I don't know if I would recommend them or not. It really just depends on uh, what you look at in the, in a Lego set and the build experience and what they do. Uh, these things are fun. They're fun play sets. Uh, I mean, goodness, they can fly them around, drive them around things. I could see you know, a kid driving this thing out in the backyard, getting it dirty, and nothing wrong with that. So, I mean, I won't do that, but... Uh, but anyway, case, guys, uh, that is a quick look at these three sets. Also, a big thank you to the LEGO Group for providing me these early copies for review. Even though these are actually already out, they were released on March 1st. I'm just a little late to the game. Uh, let me know what you guys think by leaving me a comment in the comments section below. I love your comments. They're always great, you guys. I really appreciate it. I truly, truly do. Can you believe that? I hope you do. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.